I would say to young African Americans is to learn your history and value that. Uh, you must know where you've been to know where you're going, as my mentor Dizzy used to say. You have to have one foot in the past and one foot in the future. And that's what you have to do. You have to study. It's not just Martin Luther King. He wasn't alone. You know, so we get hooked on these one. Well, the media does that to us. And the, the, young, the youth is really the victims of the media because they go by what the media tells them, what to dress, what to listen to, what to wear, where to go this and where to... If you're not, you ain't here. But you have to be a person who searches and go out on your own and find out things for yourself. And one thing for you to do as a young Afro-American is to study something about the history. And then they wouldn't say like they say to me sometimes, jazz is white people's music, and it hurts. Oh, wow. I bet it does. That hurts. Now, I'll grant you, you see the white artists, and you see <coughs> the audience is white and Japanese. And when I was coming up, 60% was Afro-Americans. And you may get 40 or 30% white. Mm -hmm. And how that is turned around has changed the image so that the Afro-American youth doesn't know that this is a, a great achievement. Indeed. That that people suffered for. Louis Armstrong or, or you know, one of our first ambassadors, you know, uh, he suffered to be what he, and it made it, he made, he charted a path for all of us. And all the guys who know the history of it, they know that, all the jazz musicians. But the, 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 uh, the general, you know, I went to Black College Network tour. And I played at the, at the Cosby Auditorium in Spelman and other schools, Jackson State, uh, uh, Florida A&M, and all the black Southern, uh, South Carolina State and all. And I was hurt in that the black schools concentrated on marching bands for the football That's games. That's right. That's right. And didn't pay enough attention to Afro-American classical music. And I said to, to some of the students, I know they didn't like it. I said, okay. I was thinking I was at Tennessee State, and they had a 200-piece band. And when we had the jazz class, we had a few students, and half of them couldn't play as well in that idiom as some of the other schools I had been attending, white schools in particular. And uh, I said, well, you know, all oh, y'all practicing to be athletes, huh? Because you can throw your <laughs> legs up and do all that. You got a hip march. But I said, you're going to have to march straight to the welfare if you're going to try to play them instruments when you get out of here. Unless you get serious about these instruments. And another, all show. Huh? All, all show. show for the football game. That's what I mean, yes. And, uh, you know, it's changed now. I just was at Howard, and uh, Howard is different now than when my buddy Benny Golson went there. They have a jazz program there. They have a great jazz Good. program. Good. That's wonderful. So we're, you know, it's looking up. All the white schools have them. Yes. That's why people call it white people's music. That is amazing. Yeah. But now they have them at Oberlin. They have jazz programs. So it's, it's in the last 10 or 15 years... It's become, it's in vogue to have a jazz program at your school. Good. So it's getting better.